Let's quickly have a conversation about how to choose a domain name for a website. This could be a personal website. This could be an e-commerce store, a business website, and what have you. So here are the steps I really want you to pay attention to. The first thing is you want to choose a domain name that reflects the purpose of your website. Okay, so selecting the right domain name for your website is crucial, though. It should reflect your identity or a purpose, and it has to be easy to remember. So what you want to do here is you want to incorporate relevant keywords. You want to keep it concise. You want to avoid any kind any kind of uh, complexities. And so branding is important as well. So consider using your brand name if applicable. Now, the brand name has to be clear of uh, any copyright, any uh, any copyright sort of uh, claims, you know, and if location matters, include it in the domain as well. You want to choose a recognizable extension like .com and ensure the name is easy to pronounce and spell. So you want to test for future scalability and availability as well. So what we have seen in our research is that, you know, a well-chosen domain name enhances your online identity and user recognition. And we've been doing research for the last 15 years and we have seen this a lot. So that's the, so the first step is you want to choose a domain name that reflects the purpose of your website. The second step is you want to opt for a domain name that is short and easy to spell. So when selecting a domain name, you want to prioritize simplicity and you want to make sure the domain name is memorable. In other words, it has to be, people have to be able to remember the name. Choose a name that is short, making it easy to type and remember. You want to steer clear of complicated spellings, numbers, or special characters that can confuse your visitors. Remember, the whole idea is, is not about you. It's about your visitors. You want your visitors to remember the, the website, the domain name. So you want to aim for a name that people can recall after seeing it just once. Keep it straightforward and free from unnecessary complications to ensure that your website's address is user-friendly and leaves a lasting impression. You want people to have a lasting impression here. So a simple and easy to remember domain name contributes to a positive user experience and helps people actually find your website with ease, which, which is what you want anyway, okay? And uh, the bottom line here is that you want, again, it has to be short and sweet, short and sweet. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Welcome back. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Step number three, you want to incorporate relevant keywords. When we talk about relevant keywords, what are relevant keywords? Well, keywords revolve around your niche, your geography, your target audience. So any word, any keyword that actually uh, resonates with your target audience, that is really important. When we talk about uh, keywords, we're speaking, we're speaking about your target audience, but we're also talking about some of the keywords that your competitors are using. The, the bottom line here is you're not trying to compete on keywords that are very competitive. So if you if you know that uh, you do not rank or you cannot rank on a certain keywords, don't try to fight on that. You can go with the uh, long long tail keywords as opposed to going to short tail keywords. Okay, and uh, so when we talk about relevant keywords, we're talking about uh, keywords that accurately describe the content or focus of your website. Keywords can significantly enhance your website's visibility in search engine results. You want to think about the main topics or themes of your websites and identify keywords that potential visitors might use when searching for information related to your site. So incorporating these keywords into your domain name may help uh, your site rank higher in search engine results, making it easier for people to find you online. And if you need help with uh, coming up with creative ideas, Google Keyword Planner is a great resource and it can really help you generate new ideas and discover new opportunities. And the bottom line here is what? You have to think about the pain points of your audience. What are the main pain points of your audience? What are the problems they're trying to solve, and what are what are the uh, what are the solutions your website is trying to bring? Do you have a store? If you have a if you have an e-commerce store, what are you selling? If you are if you have a business uh, website, what what kind of services and products are you selling? If you have a blog, what kind of content do you have? So everything. When we talk about relevant keyword, the word relevant here revolves around your target audience. In other words, the keywords must be relevant to your target audience. And it's really important to really uh, incorporate the relevant keywords in uh, the domain name so that, I mean, you, you probably have seen websites where they say badcreditloans.org, for instance. I mean, the, those are very powerful keywords, okay? Badcreditloans.org. So, you know, you, uh, you don't have to go with uh, to that extreme, but, you know, you get the point. The point is that you have to incorporate in a very seamless way the relevant keywords in your domain. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to choose a domain name for 
personal website. Step number four, you need to avoid copyright issues. So when we talk about uh, having a domain name for a personal website, you need to avoid copyright, copyright issues. Simply because you have a personal website doesn't mean that you are not going to be sued for copyright infringement. And the, it's important to understand that if you want to avoid any potential copyright issues, you need to actually select the domain name that uh, actually is free of uh, any, uh, any sort of uh, claims, right? So before finalizing your choice, you want to take the time to ensure that your domain name doesn't infringe on an existing trademarks or copyrights. What you want to do is you want to conduct a thorough search to verify the uniqueness of the name you are considering. And so this involves what? It involves checking for registered trademarks. So you can go to the USPTO, so the US Patent and uh, Trademark Office. So you go to the website. So there is a database. Just click on it and, and search. Okay. And there is also a, an opportunity to go to your to your state's uh the LLC formation department, it can be LLC or a corporation or a LP, whatever. Every state has a, a, a platform whereby you can search for names so you can see if a name is already in use. Okay. And uh, so what we talk about, we, you also need to think about, uh, you know, just make sure that you do this, or this, uh, this step because you want to prevent legal complications down the road. And you also want to protect your brain's identity. If you find any similar names associated with established trademarks, it's just advisable to come up with an alternative that is entirely distinct and won't raise any copyright concerns. The bottom line is you are spending a lot of cash already in trying to really come up with a domain name. And chances are, if, you're, if your website ranks in uh, Google at some point, you are going to draw significant value. Remember, right now you're not really that big, right? You're a small website and nobody knows you. But once you're known, if you if, if you are drawing a lot of traffic, if somebody were to actually uh, somebody were to, were to file a uh, copyright claim against you, imagine the damage. At that at that time, things will be really complicated. You know, that's what you have to think about. So, if you want to scale in the future, you want to scale up properly. Make sure that you have the right domain name from the get go. You want to actually steer clear of it, of any complication, any legal, any regulatory complications from the get go. So when we talk about copyright issues, we're also talking about names that do not actually uh, confuse visitors. Be very careful about that. The next thing you want to do here is you want to choose a top domain level domain uh, extension carefully. Again, let me repeat that. You want to choose a top level domain extension carefully. So when we talk about top uh, the extension, we're talking about you know things like uh, .com, .info, .edu, .tv, and uh, so selecting the right domain extension or TLD is a crucial ex uh, is a crucial decision that you sh that really should align with the purpose and goals of your of your website. The most common uh, TLD is .com, which is widely recognized and used for various types of websites. However, if you are running a blog or you're running, let's say quote-unquote, a niche website, you might consider a blog if you're running a blog, or if you're showcasing your portfolio, you can just uh, maybe have that portfolio. You know, so those uh, those TLD, uh, that TLD could be suitable. It is really essential to choose a TLD that reflects your website's content and focus. Don't try to really sort of like uh, razzle-dazzle your visitors and try to confuse them. This will this will actually will backfire. People will actually, uh, you will see your bounce rate will be really high. People will come on your website and just leave right away. So be very careful here. Additionally, if your website target a specific geographic audience, using a country-specific uh, TLD can be beneficial. For example, uh, code.tz could be for Tanzania or KE for Kenya or for the U.S. Just put, just put the... Sorry about that. All right. Just put the U.S., okay? It's, so it's really, if you want to put uh, U.K., just put the U.K. This is totally possible. Let me drink some water here. All right. So the thing here is that you, you need to understand the possibilities are endless, but you have to be uh, really careful if you're trying to really niche down. It's all about what really works for you and what doesn't work for you. So for a personal website, you can naturally just stick with the .com. Now, it, it also depends on uh, your future goals, your future uh, sort of uh, your future goals. Yeah. About the website. Do you want to uh, convert to uh, actually convert the website into a uh, a business website, let alone into a blog, whatever. So the, the name, the TLD that you choose from the get-go should actually be aligned with uh, the overall vision that you have for the website in the long run. 
So not just about uh, the short-term long run and the short-term uh, vision, but also the long-term vision. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to choose a domain name for a personal website. The next step I want you to really uh, focus on right now is to verify the availability of your chosen domain name. So it's really important that you you verify the availability of, of your chosen domain name because see, even if the name were available, if you have a name that's available, you still need to make sure that the domain name itself is available. So ensuring the availability of your chosen domain name is a crucial step for establishing your online presence. So to do this, you can use domain name search tools provided by domain registrars from uh, from uh, GoDaddy.com all the way to the other players. So these tools allow you to check whether your desired your desired domain name is already taken or if it's available for registration. So what you want to do here is you want to visit a reputable domain registrar's website, for example, uh, GoDaddy.com. Okay, and so these are companies that facilitate the registration of domain names, and uh, so you want to look for the domain name search or a domain availability tool. It's usually prominently displayed on their homepage, and you want to enter your desired domain name into the search bar. Now, one thing I need to say here is that you want to make sure you need to type exactly what you want to like you need to type uh, the domain name exactly as you intend to use it don't try to really like uh, take shortcut uh, shortcuts here and you want to click the search button to see the results the tool will quickly uh, show you the if the domain name is available or if it has already been registered by someone else so if your chosen domain name is available that's great news right you can proceed with the registration process if it's already taken the tool might suggest alternative domain names or variations that are available. Now, if you if you if you are actually trying to uh, set up a personal website, maybe uh, your your needs for branding are not really as strong right now, so you could be a little a little flexible. If you are establishing a, a website, things could be a little different, right? And what what I want to say here is that you need to understand the the availability of uh, a of a domain name depends also on all kinds of situations where you have to ask yourself. Am I making the right decision here? Am I comfortable with, with uh, the name that I have? Because see, if uh, the domain registrar suggests uh, names to you, you have to be comfortable with those names, and you have to also think about not about not just uh, the short term, the short term, uh, I would say, uh, implications of the name, but also the long term implications as well. The next thing you want to do is you want to avoid hyphens and numbers. So, you know, you want to avoid those uh, special symbols, whatever. When choosing a domain name, it's important to prioritize simplicity and ease of communication. So you want to avoid hyphens and numbers in your domain name because you want to really uh, enhance the, uh, the the ability of the, the name to be memorable and, and also clear, especially when you're already verbally sharing with others. So here is why you should steer clear of hyphens and numbers. First of all, you want to think about clarity in communication. So hyphens and numbers can be easily misunderstood when spoken aloud. For instance, if your domain name is my website, like my dash website dash 123.com, someone might hear my here my dash website 123.com. So this confusion could lead to a potential visitors tapping in the wrong domain resulting in lost traffic which you don't want anyway when you're new when if you have a new website you do not want to lose traffic because any time any traffic you can get you want to keep it you also have to think about memorability so domains without hyphens and numbers are generally easier to remember people tend to recall domain names that are straightforward and use only letters so this is especially important if you are relying on word of mouth recommendation or let's say uh, if you want your audience to easily remember your website's url and so this is kind of important and the third thing is that seo you know search engine search engines prefer domain domain names without hyphens and numbers while it's not a major ranking factor having a clean and concise domain name can contribute to a positive user experience which indirectly affects your seo and so the bottom line here is what when we talk about uh, user experience, we're speaking about uh, the bounce rate. So if there, if your bounce if your bounce rate is high on a specific page, then you telling Google indirectly or even directly for that matter that uh, the content on that web on that uh, web page is not really that good. That's why people are just uh, you know 
staying on their web on their on their page for five seconds and they're just bouncing off so you do not want to uh, to to have that and if that if it's only uh, if, if that's really triggered by the wrong domain name that you had you just might, might want to fix it right now and have the proper domain name for you Step number eight, you want to stay away from trendy names, okay? I mean, when choosing a domain name, you want to prioritize timeless. Don't go over trendy. So trendy names can quickly become outdated, while timeless names ensure longevity, consistency, searchability, credibility, and future growth. That's what you want anyway. And the consider words or concepts that remain relevant over time, enhancing your brain's uh, lasting uh, appeal and adapting it to your business's uh, evolution. So making this choice strategically strengthens your online presence for years to come, which is what you should, you should actually aim for anyway. The next thing you want to do here, and that's the last step here, you want to consider domain privacy. So, you know, when we talk about domain privacy, what is that? Well, we, we're talking about uh, your, your identity. You know, we're talking about more than that. So ensuring your privacy online is crucial. So when you register a domain, your personal information becomes publicly available in the HOE's database. However, domain privacy services offered by registrars shield your personal details from prying eyes. And so this helps to prevent spam, unwanted solicitations, and potential security risks. And I'm even talking about physical security. So by choosing domain privacy, your contact information will be replaced with the domain uh, with the registrar's information in the public records and uh, this will help you safeguard your identity and personal personal data so when you think about it you got to think about this as a proactive step to maintain your online privacy and uh, protect yourself from potential vulnerabilities so this is an important element to really think think about because you know choosing a domain name for a personal website is not just a little thing it, it, it there is a formula there is a logic that you need to follow if you try to really do things the right way, because that's that's going that's going to uh, prevent uh, some kind of futures, some kind of future leaks, some kind of future problems. And I'm not even talking about privacy here. I mean, for us, the most important risk when you are asking, when you are thinking about choosing a domain name for a personal website, is uh, the uh, copyright infringement. In other words, you are choosing a name that is not pretty similar to uh, an existing name, but pretty uh, resemble it, like significantly resemble it, resemble it. And if you are, if you have a, a judge, or if you, have, if you have a court of law that says, okay, this name cannot be, cannot stand, then you are wasting a lot of time and money and resources because you have invested already so much in in this name that you have to change things. Imagine you had ordered like a business plans, you had ordered flyers, you had ordered like all kinds of logo, like anything around that, that name, and all of a sudden, a judge is striking this down. So this could be a little problem. I mean, not a little problem. This could be a big problem. This is why you want to really uh, re do the research beforehand. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just explaining to you how to choose a, a domain name for a personal website. So number one, here are the steps. Choose a name that reflects uh, the, uh, the, the site's uh, sort of uh, vision. You want to choose a name that is short and uh, concise, short, of course, and incorporate re the relevant keywords. Avoid copyright issues. You want to choose. You want to choose a top-level domain extension carefully. Verify the availability of your chosen dom domain. You want to avoid hyphens and numbers. You want to stay away from trendy names, and you want to consider domain privacy. Thank you so much for your attention. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>